All right, good morning, everybody. It is Monday, um, and uh, today's gonna be a little bit of a different day. Uh, so we went down, uh, went down with my client down to Savannah, and we picked up his ASV. His is a 2021 with about 1,200 hours on it. So mine was a 2020 with like 1,300 hours on it. So it's basically the same machine for the most part. Um, it is well over its life for an oil change. It's been 600 hours since I had an oil change. Um, and it's about 200 hours over the hydraulic oil change. Um, you're supposed to change out the hydraulic oil and all the filters about every thousand hours. So she needs some service, but before we get to the service, we've got to get this thing cleaned up. I can tell just by opening up the back that it's probably pretty dirty inside. Um, so I'm gonna give you guys a quick walk around of the machine. It looks a little different than mine. And then we're gonna start cracking this thing open. I'm gonna show you guys how to do all that, how to crack this thing open, what to look for um, when you're uh, kind of servicing and cleaning these machines out, how we do that. And so let's take a look at what we got and then we will get started. Kind of funny, today is my birthday and I'm 39. And uh, yeah, instead of doing any fun, cool mulching, we're cracking open a machine and doing all the real fun behind the scenes stuff that uh, you have to do to be able to mulch. You guys only see the fun stuff, but if you wanna get into mulching, here's all the behind the scenes stuff that goes into keeping these machines running. So let's get into what we're getting into. All right, so here she is. Um, machine looks like it's been used, but I will say it doesn't look like it's been abused. Um, the guy told me they mostly used it for mulching in the 1200 hours that they've had it. Um, and uh, that seems about right because you can actually go into the computer and it'll tell you how many hours it's been running with the high flow on, which is about 860 out of the 1200 hours. So tracks look good. Undercarriage, the bogies and everything on the undercarriage look really good. Uh, the squirrel cage is getting a little, that's about where it should be of 1200 hours. Probably got another couple hundred hours on that before it's gonna have to be changed, but uh, that'll be for a different day. Um, as you can tell, she's a little dirty, and this door's a little sticky. A little sticky. Oh, there she pops. You can tell she's a little dirty in there. Let me open up this side panel. I'll show you. So you see all that in there? All that debris. It's been a while since she's been blown out, cleaned up. We may have to pressure wash. There's a lot of debris. The guy's like, yeah, we keep our machines clean. I'm like, I cracked this thing open when we bought it, and I was like, it doesn't really look like it. And look at all that packed underneath the muffler right there. That's a fire waiting to happen right there underneath the, the muffler and the DPF. That's just a fire waiting to happen, son. So we got to get her cleaned up. All that in there. Look at all this. That's a mess. So if this back end is dirty, I know uh, underneath the machine is a mess. So let's crack this cab open. Let's pop the cab. We're going to pull the floor pan out. Drop the belly pans and see what she looks like. Did I pull it? Oh yeah, there it is. There's two. And there's three. Come on. Supposed to be four, but he's missing one, so. Oh well. Oh. Ah. Yeah, push. Okay. Oh. Alright, there should be a uh, should be a little um thing right there that holds it. Where is that little thing? Oh, hold it right there. Alright. Oh I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. I, got it. I see it there. You're good, let go. Yeah, you're good. It should be fine. Ooh. Oh yeah, look how dirty she is. Look at this. We're gonna have, oh, the mats are gone. Oh no. We gotta get you some new mats. There one. Yeah, we need to put some no -sees on these bolts. They're a little rusted. A little rusty. Oh, yeah, that's a problem. That's the problem. Oh, we Come on. They kind of roll out. Oh. Heavy. All right. 
check it out. Yep. One, two, three. All right, folks, she is a dirty, dirty girl in here. There's supposed to be some foam pads right here and on these edges here that create like a seal between the edge of the cab and this, and they're gone. That's why all this is just leaves and sticks. We're going to have to order some foam pads for that. Um, my, I need some new ones for mine, too. They're about gone. Some mice got to a couple of them, and... They just deteriorate really quickly, but these are just completely missing. So, she's been a minute since she's been cleaned out. There's a whole bunch of crap in here. So now, to get all this crap out, the easiest way to do that is we're gonna drop these, these floor pans out and uh, see if we can't get her cleaned up. Oh, okay. God. Yep, I knew that was coming. These pans are heavy. Here you go. They look like plated steel. They are. They're there and plate of really something steel. Water ridge. All right. One. Come on. Nice and easy. Oh goodness. Oh my gosh, look at all the dirt. Look at all that. Oh, that's dirty. That is dirty, dirty. Oh wow, that's a lot of dirt. That's a lot of dirt, folks. Uh, yeah, that's like three quarters of an inch just built up in there. Oh yeah, oh gosh. There it come. She's a mess. <clears throat> I knew this thing was dirty. I knew you were a dirty girl. Oh, we are slinging wrenches today. What do you got, man? Oh, come on. What? Why is it? Why is it not going? There it goes. Oh wow, look at the dirt in this one. Look at the dirt. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh, oh. Look at all that, folks. Look at all that. Guys, like, yeah, I, tell, I clean my equipment. I take care of it. Oh, yeah. It's real clean. It's been a minute since they cleaned it, that's for sure. I'm just one of those people, when I sold my John Deere, I went through that thing to the nines. I cleaned it. I cleaned it, I blew it out, pressure washed it. I made sure that thing was spotless for whoever was buying it. I just don't understand. I wish more people would do that because well, she's a bit, she's a mess. We're gonna get her clean. Come hell or high brush, we're gonna get her clean. All right, so we got our belly pans. I'm just gonna start knocking all this stuff down to the floor. Look at that, look how thick that is. Oh my gosh. Oh. <clears throat> oh, look at that. Look at that. That's just packed in here. Probably, yeah. Probably, yeah. I'm guessing this is a hundred hours or so. I'm gonna guess this is somewhere in that ballpark. One to a hundred ish hours. She is a mess. I'm gonna go get the blower here in just a second. Robert's back here. Look at look at how much dirt came out from 
up underneath the uh, uh, up underneath the muffler there. And you're still digging it out. Look at that. That's dirt. That's just pure like. I go good in the garden right it there. Would. Would. <laughs> uh, yeah. That's pure potting soil right there. I mean, the machine is in good, it is in good condition. It's just been a long time since she's been cleaned. <clears throat> so, let me go grab the blower and we'll start blowing this thing out and then uh, it may need a pressure wash. see what we got here at the bottom of the radiator oh my goodness so all this is right here at the back end of the cooling package where the radiator is and it is just completely impacted with crap oh no it won't but you don't want all this at the bottom of the radiator oh my gosh See if I can reach my hand up in here and get some of this stuff that's so the radiator is right here. I got my hand. There you go. There's the radiator. And all this pine straw and stuff that likes to clog up radiators is all down in the bottom of this machine right here. The blower would not dislodge it. And that's just that's a pile of dirt right in there behind that hose. Oh, this is a mess. Absolute mess. I'm gonna try to dig my hand up in there and get some of that out. Well, I can tell you they did not really keep this machine very clean. I mean, all of this right here came out of this battery. There's like a hollow space in here behind the battery compartment. And all of this came out of that, just that one compartment. I mean, it was basically full to the top. So yeah, she was dirty. So what I'm gonna do now is we're gonna, I'm gonna, just kind of wipe these floor pans clean a little bit clean them up I'm gonna put one screw back in them and then I've got the pressure washer set up over here normally I wouldn't like I keep mine pretty clean where I don't typically need to pressure wash my machine I typically just blow it out I've never really needed to to pressure wash mine I, you know I wipe the belly pans and go up in there and get out any dirt or what not but uh, um, this guy needs some serious work so we're gonna have to pressure wash it because there's just there's just dirt impacted into everything in this thing so <clears throat> i think that's going to be the best way to get it clean so let me uh get those belly or the floor pans um kind of back up and then I'll, I'll lower the cab i'm not gonna put the 
bottom pan in just got to be real careful but i can drive it over to where just got to go that far and then i'll take the pans i'll drop the pans back down and we'll start cleaning her up so before we pressure wash and while this thing is dry one of the things i did really quick was go through here and look for any any seeps or leaks because if it's wet you're not gonna be able to see that stuff but but now uh that we've got it a little bit cleaned out and it's somewhat somewhat dry or somewhat cleaned out and mostly dry um i'm looking for any any seepage or any like loose fitting or anything that's going to be dripping or seeping hydraulic oil um especially back here in this area or in this area in the front where all this you got all these hoses and fittings and stuff we do got a little hose here that's got a little bit of wear right there and then this one right here has got a little nick in it but nothing's nothing seeping through it looks like something wore on that you may have to get that wrapped but i have not seen any hydraulic leaks coming through here um i think this machine was kept outside because most of the dirt and grime in there that i was digging out was kind of wet so i think uh i think um it was probably kept outside and not inside a shop but uh outside of that it looks pretty good on the hydraulic side everything in this thing's just filthy but we're about to change that because i got the pressure washer hooked up and we're going to go to town one other small issue that we've got is this uh this male fitting here is leaking a little bit of oil so we're gonna have to probably get a new male fitting you can see it's been it has been seeping oil since we picked it up a little bit it would probably if you hooked it up it would probably be fine it's probably just the seal that's in here has gone bad so that's another thing we got to do a quick fix on but that's not a big deal other than when you take that head off it's probably going to gush hydraulic oil but not much you can do about that so let's get uh, this thing over to the pressure washer and try to get it somewhat cleaned up
All right, this is where we're at at the moment. Uh, I'm not worried about the outside of it really right now or the undercarriage. I don't want to spray that undercarriage because it's going to blow all that dirt <clears throat> back up into the machine. I'm not trying to mess with that day. I can wash the undercarriage anytime. Uh, I don't have to break the whole machine open to do that. So I just wanted to get the inside. Really, the inside of this thing was the main thing. I did wash the windows uh, right there because once this thing comes down, Unless you want to raise the arms all the way up it's a little hard to clean those windows so i got those a little bit but just tried to get all that crap out of there all that crud stuff everywhere in this thing i might hit that battery box one more time really quick but uh oh my gosh all kinds of crud and mud came washing out of this thing i think the ass end of this thing got buried in the mud at some point there's still a bunch of stuff i can't get that wand back there behind that def box maybe i can i don't know i need to wash that out a little better maybe but uh i'm gonna let her just kind of sit and i'm gonna hit those two spots really quick and then i'm gonna just let her sit and drip dry for about an hour and just air dry out and uh we'll go from there i might start kind of taking out some of this pine straw in here this uh this grate right here is just full of stuff you know People will lie to you about their machines in a heartbeat if they want to sell it, I'm telling you. Uh, and, you know, I, I don't think this guy was very truthful about how much they kept this machine clean and blown out. I really don't. I really don't. So, just be... I had a feeling when we went and looked at it, you know, all the stuff that was packed in right back here around the, the exhaust and everything. As I opened it up, and I asked the guys, are you guys going to keep this thing clean? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, all right. <clears throat> but the deal was basically already done. And I didn't think it being dirty would really hurt anything. But <clears throat> when you're mulching, you got to keep these machines clean. It's just imperative. Um, and they obviously went a good while without doing anything to this machine as far as keeping it clean. So it is what it is. Uh, let's let her dry out and uh, start putting her back together. Well, the guy said the machine was clean and they kept it clean. Well, that's the pile of all the stuff I took out before the pressure washer got to it that we swept up off the ground or I, I swept up into a pile. So that's my foot. All that come out of that machine before I got the pressure washer to it. So this is why you got to keep, especially if you're mulching, you got to keep your, clean, your machines clean, folks that's that's it's been a long time since that machine was cleaned out i don't know if that if ever i mean that could be 1200 hours worth of crap there's a lot of stuff in that machine i pulled some stuff out of my machine but i have never pulled that much crap out of mine before so yeah she's about half dry so we'll be putting her back together here shortly not too much longer all right folks time has come to put this machine back together she's pretty dry Little, still little drips here and there, but that's to be expected. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna uh, start on my on the back end because that's the only place to start and work my way forward. Start lifting these panels back up, 
and getting them screwed back into place. They are heavy. These are thick quarter inch panels and trying to lift them up by myself and get the screws in place is, it's interesting. Let's just say that. This first one's not too bad. Because it swings toward me. It's the first two aren't too bad. But the last one, because it swings out away from you, that one's pretty tough. done All right, she is cleaned up and put back together. Well, I probably still will need to pressure wash the outside of it, especially that undercarriage, but we'll get to that another day because uh, it's getting late in the day and I, I am wore out from cleaning one of these things out. Especially doing it by yourself, it'll wear you out. Having to crawl up underneath that machine and do all that, it just wears you out. But the inside is clean. It's clean as about as clean as I can get it. I seriously think the ass end of this thing went into the dirt somewhere. It, it got buried in the mud, I think, at some point. But outside of that, she's cleaned up. I got the pressure washer. The, uh, the quick connect underneath there was all full of crap. I may need to pull that guard off at some point and just open it up and see if there's anything else in there. But I got a bunch of dirt out of it. I still see a little bit of stuff in there, but nothing that I think is going to be problematic. But... The pins and everything still work. It had the bucket on it. I dropped that off. It's sitting right there. So, outside of that, we got to fix this little, this quick connect. Or, yeah, because it's, it's still leaking a little oil. He's a little leaky. But outside of that, I think we're going to take this door guard off too right here. Because this just doesn't serve any purpose right here um this is basically in my opinion mine doesn't have this it's basically useless but and i don't think i think uh my buddies over at land services are going to do the mulching over here now they came by earlier today and gave the owner a quote to mulch all that down in there that's 22 acres and it's kind of what he was thinking about doing with this machine but i just don't think that this machine is really suited to go in there and grind all that up in there it's just the the hardwood stumps in there are massive they're big they big plus all that slash and all that they're gonna try to burn you know they were talking about burning all that and then just grinding the rest of it with the big raptor 500 and if that happens i'll be out here to film that that'll be awesome we'll get some good footage of them out here grinding all that up and everything that'll be fun so i hope you guys learned a lot you know these machines are very much different than then a lot of other skid steers, the way you can drop the belly pans and everything and all of that stuff. It's just a little bit different setup with all the forestry guarding and everything. Um, but uh, yeah, she was dirty, but the machine overall is, it looks like it's been used, but not abused. It's actually in pretty good shape. You know, whoever they had running it, 
didn't look like they abused it um, I mean it's got the normal nicks and scratches on it that any machine that's been in the woods would have but uh, other than that it looks pretty good it's just this needed to be cleaned up now it's got to get serviced I got a thousand dollars worth of filters uh, in my truck if you want to know why mulching is so expensive with this stuff why we charge what we do I mean just the just the filters not any oils and not any fluids just the filters were almost a thousand dollars for this machine with the hydraulic filters and the oil filters the fuel filters the air filters all that stuff uh yeah it was just just shy of a thousand bucks so now and then you got the fluids on top of that, all the hydraulic oil this thing takes 23 gallons of hydraulic oil i mean it's a lot of money to get these things serviced so i'm glad it's cleaned up she's going back in the shop i didn't see any leaky leaks up uh, up underneath it everything looked tight and dry so we're looking good so all right it's a beautiful afternoon and i'm out of here so i hope you guys enjoyed it and i will catch you guys on the next one bye everybody